Hi, myself, R. Indumati, working as assistant professor in the Department of Microbiology at Kesa College of Arts and Science for Women. Today, my topic is about bioenergetics. The term bioenergetic is made up of two words one is bio and the other one is energetics. Bio means life for living, energetic means study of energy. So, basically, bioenergetic is the study of energy changes in biological reactions. Bioenergetic is the field of biochemistry concerned with the transformation and use of energy by living cells. The goal of bioenergetic is to describe how living organisms acquire, transform and utilize energy in order to perform biological work. The study of metabolic pathways is thus essential to bioenergetics. The chemical reactions performed by an organism make up its metabolism, catabolic reactions and the anabolic reactions. Catabolic reactions involve the breakdown of chemical molecules, anabolic reactions involve the synthesis of compounds. Next, uh, <coughs> ATP, adenosine triphosphate is the main energy currency for organisms. The goal of metabolic and catabolic process are synthesis ATP from available starting materials from the environment and to break down ATP into adenosine triphosphate and inorganic phosphate by utilizing it in biological process. In a cell, the ratio of ATP to ADP concentration is known as the energy change of the cell. A cell can use this energy change to relay information about cellular needs. If there is more ATP than ADP available, the cell can use ATP to do work. But if, the, if there is more ADP than ATP available, the cell must synthesize ATP via oxidative phosphorylation. Now we will see about the concept of free energy. Every living cells and organisms must perform work to stay alive, to grow and to reproduce. The energy process in living organisms are defined by the basic law of thermodynamics. The basic law of thermodynamics deals with the energy actually available to do work. Utilizable is known as free energy. Changes in the free energy delta G are valuable in predicting the flexibility of chemical reactions. The reaction can occur spontaneously if they are accompanied by decreasing free energy that is delta G. During a chemical reaction, heat may be released or absorbed. Cells require a source of free energy. Cells are isothermal systems, meaning they function at a constant temperature and pressure. Photosynthetic cells acquire free energy from absorbed solar radiation. Heterotrophic cells acquire free energy from nutrient molecules. Cells transform this free energy into ATP and other energy rich compounds to provide energy for biological work. Next is the principle of bioenergetics. Biological energy transformation obey the law of thermodynamics. There are two law of thermodynamics. One is first law of thermodynamics, the other is second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics deals with the principle of conservation of energy. For any physical or chemical change, the total number of energy in the closed system remains constant. Energy may change form or it may be transported from one region to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. This is the first law of thermodynamics. Whereas the second law of thermodynamics is the universal trends towards increasing disorder. In all natural processes, the entropy of the universe increases unless energy requiring process contract it. Next is the important state functions for the study of biological systems are the Krupp's free energy that is G which is equal to the total number of energy capable of doing work during a process at constant temperature and pressure. If delta G is negative then the process is spontaneous and termed exogenic. If delta G is positive then the process is non-spontaneous and termed as endo endochronic. If delta G is equal to zero, then the process has reached the equilibrium. Next, we will see about certain terms. One is enthalpy, the other one is entropy. Enthalpy is denoted by the letter H, which is the heat content of the system. Enthalpy is the amount of heat energy transferred in a chemical process under constant temperature. When delta H is negative, the process produces heat and it is termed as exothermic. When delta H is positive, the process absorbs heat and it is termed as endothermic. The entropy is a quantitative expression of the degree of randomness or disorder of the system. Entropy measures the amount of heat dispersed or transferred during a chemical process. When delta S is positive, then the disorder of the system has increased. When delta S is negative, then the disorder of the system has decreased. Now we will see about the relationship between the change in free energy, enthalpy and entropy. 
the condition of biological systems of constant temperature and pressure and the sun's conditions the relationship between the change in free energy enthalpy and entropy can be described by the equation expression where t is the temperature of the system in kelvin the relationship is delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s where delta g is krebs free energy delta h is change in enthalpy delta s is change in entropy t is the temperature t represents the absolute temperature in kelvin that is k is equal to 273 degree plus or minus celsius next we will see about the redox potential the oxidation reduction potential may be defined as the quantitative expression of the tendency that a compound has to give or receive electrons the redox potential of the system may be calculated by the equation e equal to e not plus 0.0592 by n log of concentration of the reducing agent by the concentration of the oxidation agent this is the equation of redox potential in bioenergetics redox potential is the ratio of nad plus to nadh plus plus h plus it describes the availability of nad plus for metabolism next we will see about the different types of bioenergetic reactions one is exergo exergonic reaction the other one is endergonic reactions exergonic reaction implies the release of energy from the spontaneous chemical reactions without any concomitant utilization of energy this reaction have an ability to perform work and include most of the catabolic reactions most of this reaction involve the breaking of the bond during the formation of the reaction intermediates this is denoted by the equation delta g is equal to g products minus g reactant g delta g is always negative in exergonic reactions energy is released to the surroundings due to that reason the change in enthalpy is negative value for exergonic reactions the enthalpy is increased due to disorder of the system in exergonic reaction include exothermic reaction that is delta h is i this is the graph that indicates the exergonic reaction delta g is greater than 0 next is the endergonic reactions endergonic reaction in turn is the opposite of exergonic reaction it is a non spontaneous and requires an input of free energy most of the anabolic reactions like photosynthesis and dna and protein synthesis are endergonic in nature this is denoted by the equation delta g is equal to g product minus which is g reactant which is greater less than the zero so delta g is always positive this delta g is positive because it should provide outside for the progression of the reactions according to the above equation delta g is always a positive value the entropy of the system is decreased this is included with the endothermic reaction this is the graph that denotes the endergonic reaction this is the difference between endergonic and the exergonic reactions endergo endergonic is a type of reaction that has a positive krebs energy this has the negative krebs free energy this has positive value this has negative value the energy of the reactant is lower than the product the energy of the reactant is higher than the product entropy decreases whereas entropy increased reactions are non spontaneous whereas in exergonic the reaction is spontaneous endothermic reactions are endergonic whereas exothermic reaction or exergonic always requires energy for the reactions always they no need energy for the reactions it absorbs energy from the surroundings it does not it releases energy to the surroundings these are the difference between endergonic and exergonic reactions next we will see about the high energy compounds certain compounds are encountered in the biological systems which on hydrolysis eat energy the term high energy compounds or energy rich compounds are usually applied to substances which possess sufficient free energy to liberate at least 7 calories per mole at ph 7 certain other compounds which liberate less than 7 calories are referred to as low energy compounds all the high energy compounds when hydrolyzed liberate more energy than that of atp most of the high energy compounds contains phosphate group and they are called as high energy phosphates next we will see about the classification of high energy compounds there are different classes of high energy compounds they have the bond and the examples now it is the pyrophosphate it contains carbon phosphate and phosphate which is called as arinosine triphosphate or pyrophosphate acryl phosphate it has 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate carbomyl phosphate acetyl phosphate as examples 
Next class is enol phosphate. Example is phosphophenol pyruvate. Next class is thioesters, which is example of acetyl CoA, acyl CoA. Next class is gunardo phosphates, which has the examples of phosphocreatinine and phosphoarginine. These are the classification of high energy compounds. Next, we will see about ATP, that is nothing but adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine 5 triphosphate is a multifunctional nucleotide used in cell as a coenzyme. It is often also called as molecular unit of currency of intracellular energy transfer. ATP transport chemical energy within cells for metabolism. It is produced by phosphopyrrolation and cellular respiration and used by enzymes and structural protein in many cellular process. One molecule of ATP contains three phosphate group and it is produced by ATP synthetase from inorganic phosphate and adenosine diphosphate or adenosine monophosphate. It is nothing but ADP and AMP. The three main functions of ATP is transporting organic substances such as sodium, calcium, potassium through the cell membrane. The next function is the synthesis chemical compounds such as protein and cholesterol. Next third function is the supplying energy for mechanical work such as muscle contraction. This is the structure of adenosine triphosphate. It contains three phosphate group one sugar that is ribose and it contains the nitrogen base called as adenine. The structure of this molecule consists of purine base adenine attached to the first carbon atom of the pentose sugar ribose. Three phosphate groups are attached at the fifth carbon atom of pentose sugars. It is the addition and removal of these phosphate groups that interconvert ATP, ADP and AMP. The energy released by cleaving either phosphates or pyrophosphate union from ATP is standard state of one molecules are ATP plus water gives ADP plus PA plus delta G which has the approximate value of minus 30.5 kJ per mole whereas ATP plus water gives A adenosine monophosphate plus PPI which gives delta G value is minus 45.6 kJ per mole. These values can be used to calculate the change in energy under physiological conditions and the cellular ATP bar ADP ratio it is also called as energy change. Thank you for listening.